What's happening, y'all? Back at you again with this week's narrative. Noah, hit that intro. This week's narrative. It's a it's it's a bad idea and impossible to get out from the Carson Wentz contract. And I think you know there's a lot of debate you know going on of like what they should do with Carson Wentz. Jalen Hurts obviously came on, looked a little bit better than Carson Wentz did. You know, we know he has that dead cap. I mean, he's got that 50 million dead cap hit. And I tweeted something to the to the degree of like, hey, look, the number one reason why players in the NFL who shouldn't be playing continue to play is because of sunk cost fallacy. And a big part of sunk cost fallacy in both, re, I mean, in dynasty playing fantasy football and in the real life NFL, it's like what you invest in that player. You know, for dynasty purposes, it's like draft capital, how much you paid for him in trade, yada, yada, yada. But in real life, it's like dead cap, right? You know, they paid him over a hundred million bucks and, you know, he's going to take a salary cap hit next year, even if you cut him. And, you know, I think what people don't understand about the dead cap and all that stuff is like, that's really just like accounting, right? The, the cash has like all kind of already been, been paid. So like, to me, like you have to cut your losses. You have to know when to cut your losses. And like, now is the time to cut your losses with Carson Wentz, like trade them for, whatever to kind of like get that even if you have to pay that salary cap it's kind of like a loss here see what you can get out of Jalen Hurts like I'm not sure if he's a starting quarterback like starting caliber NFL quarterback but if he is now's the time to kind of like try and prove and see if he is that for your franchise and if he is like great you you freaking won the jackpot by landing a starting quarterback in round in round two and if he isn't then you guys have a top pick and you got, you get a shot at one of these like young guys, young guys like Zach Wilson or, or Trey Lance and take another shot, man. And then Trey Lance came from the same school. So maybe he'll be a little bit better than his version 1.0. Right. So I think that, you know, people are always hesitant to move on uh, from based on what they invested both in real life and in dynasty. And I think that is one of the biggest weaknesses of players and GMs. And I think you need to know when to cut your losses. And this is one of those times. I also think that there's not going to be a world where Carson Wentz isn't starting in like two or three years. Like Nick Foles was giving given a ridiculous contract with the Jaguars and the Chicago bears, after seeing him get outperformed by Gardner Minshew decided to take on the contract this year and flip flop between him and Mitchell Trubisky, the saints as well. They just paid, what is Taysom Hill getting this year? Isn't he getting ridiculous amount of money? 15 mil or something like that. $15 million. And he was just a backup. He was basically third string. And then he outperformed or he's more trusted than Jameis Winston. He came in for Drew Brees. I don't see a reason why the Philadelphia Eagles wouldn't test the market to try to trade Carson Wentz away and just free themselves of that money because they cut him. I'm not, I don't really understand like the whole dead cap thing. I just know it means you paid the guy and now you can't use that money on somebody else, obviously, but you can trade him away instead of just eating that money. Even if it takes you, it, it costs you like something pretty shitty where it's like, wow, I spent the second overall pick on this guy. I paid him all this money. We're only getting a second round pick in return. I mean, the fucking, the Arizona Cardinals picked what Josh Rosen, 11 overall. They traded that for a second round pick, took Andy Isabel who stinks, but guess what? They're in a much better spot for it because now they have Kyler Murray. So as you said, like the whole sunk cost fallacy, I don't know about you, Mike, but I learned that like freshman year at high school. It's like, okay, I spent 500 bucks on this pair of shoes. I thought it was going to be a thousand bucks, 10 years later. I, I wore them to cut grass and now they're garbage, but I got to like <laughs> hold on to them for whatever reason. Like you got to get rid of that stuff. So uh, Carson Wentz is a, he's a sun cost in every sense of the word. And I, but I do think that some coach wouldn't mind trying to take him on as a project. I wouldn't be surprised if Bruce Arians is like, you know what? I'm the quarterback guru. Have him sit behind Tom Brady for a year. He's going to be my guy in Tampa next season. Maybe that's what ends up happening depending on the money there. But I don't see how a guy who was as good as he was both in college and early in his career, then just kind of fell off doesn't at least get a second chance or a coach or a offense, whatever, like a front office doesn't want to try to take on the challenge of rebuilding Carson Wentz, like fucking Dr. Frankenstein and seeing if they can put out uh, a formidable quarterback out there. Because at one point he was that, and although it's going to take a whole lot of money for them to take on a guy like Carson Wentz, I wouldn't put a pass like two or three GMs to want to take that shot. Yeah, I do think he gets another shot, but he's definitely on that Jameis Winston trajectory, that Marcus Mariota trajectory right now. Like just this fall off is just unprecedented and someone his age in his prime. Um, but I guess for dynasty, more interestingly, what are you doing? Carson Wentz? Like I actually have a few Carson Wentz. I, I thought he was gonna have a good year this year. I'm an idiot, but like, what are you willing to let him go? Are you willing to let him go for second round pick just like in real life? Or do you think it'll take, you know, a little bit more than that to, to let go of Carson Wentz? 
I would, yeah, I would definitely give him up for a second round pick in super flex leagues, just because yeah. actually even probably one quarterback leagues, you're not going to get that for him in a one quarterback league because quarterbacks aren't that coveted. But in a super flex league, easily a two, just because we know how deep this class is. And I think the chances of him starting next year aren't as good as him starting in a few years down the road. And even that it's like completely skeptical or speculative because there are probably what five or six first round quarterbacks in this draft which are yeah. five or six either starting or backup spots where he's not going to end up occupying. So it's it's definitely risky to hold on to him. But at the same time, like I'm not trying to sell him for a third because I think the chances of me hitting on a third aren't going to outweigh the benefits of Carson Wentz potentially finding a starting job next season. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, what about Jalen Hurts? Like, I, What are you willing to pay to acquire a Jalen Hurts? Same, probably the same thing at two. I, I just don't – I like him as a player, and he's probably going to be good for fantasy because he has that rushing upside. But it, it remains to be seen the type of player he is. I'd much rather be on the selling side of Jalen Hurts than the buying side of Jalen Hurts. I'd, I'd be more apprehensive to buy into the complete unknown, even if you think you're getting him at a discount. I don't know. Paying a one for him just seems pretty hasty when we know how many quarterbacks are going to be coming out in this class and are being picked. We'll know if they're being picked to be the starter, whereas Jalen Hurts was picked to be a backup. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm on board with you there. But, yeah, that's all we got for you guys this week. Hope you guys enjoyed the narrative. Make sure, again, you click that subscribe button, click that thumbs up, follow me, follow Noah on Twitter, engage with us, and just enjoy the ride and, I guess, share in our pain. Or I guess more or less Noah's pain as he continues to watch Anthony Lynn run his organization. Can't wait for him to be fired, Mike. Can't wait for it. <laughs> it's going uh, to be exciting. But, all right, see you guys next week. Thank you.